Hi, welcome back to Box of Delights. I'm Ricky Royal, and this is Traveller, the customizable card game from Horizon. We're going to dive straight into this one. This is a two player starter set. There are other expansions, like little box expansions, bigger box expansions. I've got all my tokens in a little tray here. There's also a play mat. I'm going to throw that out there in a second. This is a sci-fi game based upon Traveller RPG. And it tells us here, this is an adaptation of Mark Miller's classic science fiction setting. We're gonna play the solo game. It says two to four on the box, but there is a solo game. It plays very differently to the multiplayer game. In the multiplayer game, there's a lot more interaction where you're taking a pirate action and you're wounding each other's cards. You're not gonna see that here. There is some combat with pirates, who are out there in the universe. Our objective in the solo game is to amass 20 victory points. Victory points come from completing contracts and contracts have obstacles or complications in the way making this more difficult. We're going to equip our ship with hardware and crew to complete these contracts and with that comes expenses. If we can't pay expense requirements then we lose the game. And these challenges will be things like an evacuation, a shipment that must be delivered, a science expedition, smugglers run. So not all about combat and destroying stuff, though some will be. In the way will be obstacles. These cards are dual sided. So we'll have to overcome these obstacles in order to complete the contracts. Contracts will reward us with victory points, if we get 20 victory points, we win the game. Right, let's dive straight in and set up. So it's a customizable card game. It's like an LCG, so the expansions come with a fixed set of cards. So it's not really a CCG as in a collectible card game. They call it a customizable card game. The two player starter set comes with two ships that you can play. Once you pick your ship, It'll come with two decks. You've got your adventure deck, which is your series of obstacles and contracts. And then what's called a captain's deck, a deck of 60 cards. And these will be things like connections. These are people you meet, connections made as you travel the universe, potential partners and alliances that you're making. This is a heroic action. It's kind of like a, a single use card to perform some effect. There's gear. These are pieces of equipment that can be used by your crew. So we should have some crew in here. Yep, there's crew. So people who can man your ship, you can recruit. Then there's upgrades to your ship. And then there's events, kind of like a twist of fate or a lucky break. So like in any deck construction game, you get to construct your deck before you begin. We're going to start with the pre-constructed decks that come in the two-player starter set. The starter set also comes with a bunch of cards that you can then add and customise your starter decks with. And then, of course, you can start adding expansions as well. I've been playing with this one, the Beowulf Free Trader, a ship that comes with some good basic capabilities. The other ship is the Type S Scout. It doesn't have as many capabilities, but it has higher initiative travel further, has a better attack. So a different kind of card, probably one to explore playing two player. We're gonna use Beowulf Free Trader for our solo playthrough and you'll probably start here as well. Personally, I found this game a bit of a bear to learn. So it's taken me a while to get this video to you, but I'm gonna show you how to play and break that barrier because actually it's pretty simple. So our ship starts in play. We take our adventure deck of 20 cards, give it a good old shuffle, and we'll place four of these cards, and we're going to place them with the contract side, the grey side, face up. Okay. One, two, three, four. That's the rest of the deck alongside. Then we're going to take another four cards, we'll place one on each face down. They become hidden obstacles. Shuffle up your main captain's deck. Draw a hand of seven cards. And it's that simple, we're ready to go. If you have a box of tokens, place these at the side of the board. 
Right, let's go through each of the phases. So remember, our objective is to score 20 victory points. Okay. Now the phases are a little different. I've got a good mix of cards, sorry. A little different for the solo game. First, we draw an adventure card. And I call in these obstacles. They're like obstacles to me, but they're, the official term is complication. And we're going to look for the contract with the highest victory point totals. So that's these two here. This one's worth four victory points. This one's four victory points. This one's three. This one's two. Then we can choose which one to place it on, given that they're both equal. So I can place it here or here. So where do I want two complications to go? I'm going to place it here. Right, so that's effectively in the solo game representing what my opponent might have done. Now I get to choose where to place an adventure card, but this time it's face up. Okay, so I've got jump phobia, and there's some icons on here. I'll talk about those in a little while. But I can choose where to place these. Um, and I can place it on any one of these four slots, and I'm going to choose to place it on the same one, the Zidani Science Expedition. Each contract has a maximum number of complications that can be attached here. It's this number here, it says two exclamation mark. So I can't have three here, so all I do is replace one of the existing ones with my new one. So I'm going to discard this one and replace it with this one. Okay, this gets discarded. This is a neat little mechanism. Incongruous, but hidden complications are the bane of a captain's life here, trying to get victory points. So if we can reveal these and we know which obstacles, what complications we face in order to complete a contract, all the better. Next, we have to choose an activity. In a multiplayer game, we've kind of got three options. We can pass, do nothing. We can travel to one of these four destinations, or we can take an act of piracy and go and attack another player. That last option is not available to us in solo, so we can either pass or we can go travel to one of these places. I'm just going to have a quick peek at my hand. I'll explain this as we go along. But I'm going to travel here to this scheduled shipment, nice and easy. I can't, I don't feel confident about taking any of these three on yet, but you'll understand that as we get into the game. Now, each of these locations has a cost in distance. This scheduled shipment, it's in the top left here, is one distance away. This game is icon heavy. My play map, there is a little key to those icons. And there's also one on the back of the rule book. So you can look these things up. But you can see that uh, that symbol is distance. Okay. So one distance away. This one's one distance away. This one here is a little bit further. Hu humanitarian evacuation is four distance away. So how do we pay that cost? I use my cards, okay, and I can use cards from my hand, or I can actually use cards from the top of my captain's deck. Now that's important, this is a limited resource, this captain's deck, so I can use it to pay costs, but once I get through it, I don't get the discard pile back, nothing like that. Once I've run out of cards, I've run out of cards, so I can't go further. Now that's important. In this first scenario, this basic, it's, I kind of call it a training scenario, really. In the rule book, they call this scenario alone in the dark. There's three scenarios. The real scenarios are scenarios two and three. In scenario two, for example, you pay costs either from your hand or from your deck each turn equal to the number of victory points you've collected so far. So as you progress towards the end and 20 victory points, you're going to be discarding lots of cards from your deck meaning it acts as this very fast timer, which means you've got to complete these missions very quickly. It's tough and a proper challenge for you to take on. All right, so distance, that's what I was talking about. Distance to travel. So we need to cover one distance. For every one cost we play, and cards in your hand will generate a cost. So this one, this number here shows you how many it contributes. This, if I discard this for its one resource, that would, that would pay one cost. This one, two. For every one cost you pay, your ship has a jump value. The Beowulf's free trader, this is its initiative, value three, and that determines who goes first in the two-player game. The next value down one, this is my jump value. So every one cost I play, I move one distance. So I just need to pay one cost, I'll move one distance to cover that. 
So to go to this one, I need to pay four because it's a four distance. So nice and easy for Beowulf well, Free Trader. So you can see for the Type S Scout, it's got a jump value of two. So for every one cost, I can cover two distance. So to go here, for example, I need to discard two cost. Now, the thing about paying from the top of your deck is you may, whatever you turn over is what uh, is what gets discarded. So if it's a card that gives you three, then you've overpaid and, and it's not worth um, worth doing. But as it goes, I'm going to use this this little upgrade here. Yeah, I'm just going to pay. I'm going to use this to pay the one cost. So that gets discarded. I've paid the one cost. I've traveled to this location. Right, that's the adventure phase complete. Now we move into the what's called the procurement phase. This one you, you can start playing cards from your hand to buy stuff to upgrade your ship. This is a zero cost card, so I'm going to put this into play. Then I'm going to play a crew card. We're going to play Jim Thorne, and Jim Thorne costs two. And I'm going to use remember that time, which gives two resources. Discard that. Now I'll pay the cost of Jim Thorne. I was thinking about playing Body Pistol, but I'm going to play George as well. I don't really know what traits we're going to need. This one costs two. And although this um, personal intervention, this Piers Brosnan looking fella, is good, I can't play this hero action because it has a, a, a requirement. See this icon here? I can only play this on characters that have this icon. These are the icons that the characters have. They're called skills. Okay, so this one has, what's that icon? I think that's the science skill. This one's saying we need administration skill. All right, Jim Thorne has got the star ops skill, which is kind of like combat. So I can't play him down on anyone just yet. I might just let him go and use it for its two resources to put George in. And I think I'm just going to hold on to Body Pistol for now. I like this card. Attached character gains. Gains the combat skill. Hmm. I don't really know what's coming up here. Maybe I could play this. I think I will. I think I will. It costs two. So let's draw. Okay, modular hold I like, so I shouldn't have used that. I need one more. And Siobhan Alamine. Yeah, Siobhan's good as well. Uh, this is the trouble with using uh, costs on your deck. You end up throwing away cards that you really like. Anyway, Jim's getting this pistol. Okay. Right, that's procurement phase complete. Now we move to the action phase. Now, George has an action that I'd like to use. It says, as an action, we can pay one cost and gain the administration icon until the end of round. Okay, so obviously too late to have used it in the procurement phase. I couldn't have put Piers Brosnan on here because we're only getting this now in the action phase. So this cost, or I think officially this is called expense. So one expense and we gain the administration. Okay, and we could do this as many times as we wish. An action is an action. So let's pay a Pay at the expense. This one gives one, what do they call that? EV, one expense value. Yeah, so that R, that R actually is, uh, yeah, expense value. So that goes, we've paid that cost, and then this is where these tokens come into play. We gain one of these tokens. They're double sided. This action says we gain one with the kind of the hex shape. On the reverse side is a circle. This is the expert. So I'm an expert administration skill. This is the train. So kind of a, a beginner in administration. So we gain one of these. I may come to regret that, but we'll see. It depends what this complication is right here. But the reason I'm doing that is I know that this contract can use that skill. But we'll come to that in a bit. Okay, I think we're done here. Jim Thorne can add attack and defense. We don't need attack and defense. And the pistol, as an action, can inflict one damage on a target character. Again, we don't have any target characters to fight in this solo game. But okay, so we've done the action phase. Now we move into the resource phase. And now each of our cards that we've got in play, including our ship, will generate resources. And this is where we look at the skills that they 
generate. So George is going to give us a trained sort of basic science skill. So one of these. Jim Star Ops. One of these. Again, uh, this time expert. I don't know if we need these yet. And then I'll ship the Beowulf Free Trader. That gives us two tokens. First one's called cargo. These are these are basic capabilities. The second one is cargo slash passenger. So again, your tokens are double sided. There's a cargo and there's a cargo slash passenger. Right, so that's all of our resources gathered. And there's one more actually because Jim Thorne says attached character gains the combat skill as well. Again, it's just a trained skill. All right, so we'll get one more. This icon here on this weapon, that's just a subtype. All right? This says that it's a weapon. All gear has a subtype. And that's important because each character, when equipped here, can only have one piece of gear of the same subtype. So I couldn't give him another weapon. Okay. The other significant thing to look out for are the capacities of your ship. So my ship here has capacity for four crew members. I've got two so far. Same goes for connections. All right, this, so we've got this Finch and Co. CPAs. This is a subtype organization. You can only have one connection to an organization. Okay, that's our resources all collected. Now we move into the resolution phase. We're pursuing this contract here or face down complications on a pursued contract now get flipped face up and we can see what we're facing let's see what we get wanted it says we must return the character you control to its owner's hand let's have a quick look at the icon so this one just says this is a complication this one here is an abandonment cost if for some reason a captain decides to abandon this contract we have to pay the abandonment cost okay this cost here one. This says the abandonment cost is reduced by one to zero. So we could abandon this any time if we didn't want to lose a character. But I think we will. We, we're, we're keen to push through and get victory points as quickly as possible. So we can reveal now the complications that we face. So let's return a character we control to our hand, Jim or George. If we return George, uh, Jim to our hand, then the pistol goes. So I'm going to keep. Jim out there, I'm just going to grab George back, which then completes this complication. We discard this, and now we can face the contract. So we've covered these icons already, right? That was the distance to get here. That was the maximum number of complications it could have. That's the abandonment cost. We're going to get two victory points if we complete this. And now we've got a couple more parts, okay? The milk run, it says. So the scheduled shipment to complete we have to deliver one cargo resource. We've got that because our Beowulf free trader gave it to us. All right, that completes it. Now down below, this question mark says it's a subplot. This is optional. You can do it if you want. If I've got one extra administration trained icon, then I get an extra victory point. So potentially this is worth three VPs. Now we're going to complete this as it goes. Because remember, we gathered a whole bunch of resources during the resourcement phase. So one of them was this one, which satisfies the scheduled shipment. And then we can do the subplot as well, which was this icon here. Remember what that George gave us. It doesn't matter that he's gone back to our hand. That was a resource that we gathered onto our ship. Okay, so it's gained until the end of round. And that's enough to give us the subplot and complete the contract. So these resources go away. This is completed. We score three victory points. Grab these from our resource token pool. One, two, three. Now as it goes, like all tokens in this game, they're double sided. So on the back of here is a three VP token. So I can remove these and just keep that one. That's it. 17 more to go. And that's the end of the round. 
and we'll go back to the beginning we'll start all over again now there's a couple of times that you check for victory so we'll do one now have we got 20 victory points and you'd also do one at the end of each phase so the ready phase adventure phase procurement phase action phase all right there's a little chart here to show you so one thing we're going to do at the start of this phase is the ready phase and it's just that's something that we didn't do first time because there's nothing to ready but cards like jim thorne they have this kind of exhaust icon you tip them sideways like this they would ready again i'm sure you're familiar with those ideas you can also repair your ship heal characters have been wounded and you can even move gear around okay but the other important thing is these resource tokens that i haven't spent they're now gone all right and i have to wait until the next resource phase to get them back and my ship returns home and one thing you must do which i forgot to do as soon as you resolve one of these contracts, you have to draw another one. It's down the main. So another cargo delivery, hauling cargo world by world down a what jump one route. And we give it a single complication. All right, so whenever you complete one, draw a new one, give it a complication. Now I realize I ran through that really quickly, but that's the thing about this game. To understand how it plays, like I say, I find the, the rule book a bit of a, of a bear, but understanding it is playing it. And that was the quickest way to show you, really. All right, so let's go again. So we know the ready stuff. We've got nothing to ready. More exerted cards. Put back up again. We draw back up to our hand size, which is seven. If we had any cards left over from last time, say two, we'd only draw five, right? Back up to seven. Draw a new one either here or here, they're both four victory points. That one's full, it's got two complications already. This one can take three, so it has to go here. Then we get to draw one. So I could put one here and replace this one, and I know the two complications that are gonna fill that. I could place another one here, I could place another one here. So yeah, I'm gonna draw and place one here, which replaces that one. Okay, so we've got a jump phobia and letting things slide. This one says, return an upgrade you control to its owner's hand. And this one needs a medical or a psionics skill. I'll say one thing about this playmat is it does have all the icons at the bottom. Although, here we go. So, uh, yeah, psionics or medical. That's this one. Yeah, this one. And now we have to decide whether we want to pass, stay here, not do anything, or whether we want to pursue one of these contracts. I'm just checking my hands and what I've got. I can't pursue this one. I've got no way of getting a second passenger. And I don't think I can go for this one either. So this is tough. I might have to go down the main. needing a distance of three. But it's a bit of a gamble, because I don't know what's here. And that's uh, that's the fun of this game. Pursue what you know and what you can do. Take a chance. So I need to generate three costs, which I'm gonna use with surgical intervention and negotiated non-aggression, sending those to the discard pile. We've covered the cost and now we can move into the procurement phase. And I've just realized actually we've got a few more resources than what I initially thought because we forgot Finch and Cho last time. Let me just cover that quickly. Finch and Cho says, after you gain victory points, add a bookkeeping counter to this card. You can use any token. Any token on this card becomes a bookkeeping token. So I'll just use these wound tokens. So we've got one set of victory points here, one set of victory points here. They're two separate effects. And this is a persistent effect, so two bookkeeping tokens. Now we're on our way, and we've got a couple more resources, and this can help us. This is a good card, because remember, if we get through this deck, we haven't got our 20 victory points, and we haven't got any resources to cover the cost of visiting these contracts, then we're going to lose the game. This might just save us at the end. If we've got if we've got a decent crew with decent gear, 
as it goes, we'll leave it there for now. So if you want to see how this game plays out, join me next time for the completed playthrough. Thanks for watching. See you soon.